I'm not ashamed. What are the final seven curses pronounced by Israel at Mount Ebal? This is the question that we seek to answer today as we continue our verse by verse study of the book of Deuteronomy on walking through the Bible. The glory of his cross. If you have a Bible with you, turn to Deuteronomy 27. We're going to be reading from verses 20 to 26. If you don't have a Bible, don't worry. Just follow along with us on the screen. The version that we'll be reading from is the New King James Version. So Deuteronomy 27, beginning of verse 20. Cursed is the one who lies with his father's wife, because he has uncovered his father's bed. And all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed is the one who lies with any kind of animal. And all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed is the one who lies with his sister, the daughter of his father, or the daughter of his mother. And all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed is the one who lies with his mother-in-law. And all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed is the one who attacks his neighbor secretly, and all the people shall say amen. Cursed is the one who takes a bribe to slay an innocent person, and all the people shall say amen. Cursed is the one who does not confirm all the words of this law, and all the people shall say amen. When Israel has crossed over the Jordan River, they were to gather at Mount Ebal and Mount Gerizim, two mountains that faced each other, in order to pronounce blessings and cursings as was discussed in Deuteronomy 11, verse 29. While there, Israel was also to set up stones that had written on them the contents of the book of the law and offer sacrifices to God on an altar built there for that purpose. Israel was organized by tribes, with six tribes situated at Mount Gerizim and six situated at Mount Ebal. The priests would most likely be conveniently placed towards the middle, for they would yell out the cursings, or the unrecorded blessings, and Israel would agree to them, by saying, Amen. We looked at the first five curses in our last lesson, curses that had to do with the making of idols, the showing of contempt to parents, the theft of land, the leading of, of the blind into a ditch, and the perversion of justice. As we said, these first five curses all had to do with how Israel was to treat God and how they were to treat their brethren and those less fortunate. The next four curses have to do with morality, all of which we studied in the past. The sixth curse has to do with sexual relations with your father's wife, meaning your stepmother. We saw this condemned back in Leviticus 18, verse 8, which said, The nakedness of thy father's wife shalt thou not uncover. It is thy father's nakedness. The seventh curse had to do with sexual relations with an animal. We saw this condemned in Leviticus 18, verse 23, which says, Neither shall you lie with beasts to defile thyself therewith, Neither shall any woman stand before a beast to lie down there too. It is confusion. The eighth and ninth curses had to do with having sexual relations with his sister, half-sister, or stepsister, or mother-in-law. This was condemned in Leviticus 18, verse 9 and 17. The nakedness of your sister, the daughter of thy father, or the daughter of thy mother, whether she be born at home or born abroad, even their nakedness thou shalt not uncover. Skipping to verse 17. Thou shalt not uncover the nakedness of a woman and her daughter, neither shalt thou take her son's daughter or her daughter's daughter to uncover her nakedness, for they are near kinswoman. It is wickedness. Now, of course, these curses didn't mean that other sexual sins were excused. It's just these sexual sins were held up to represent the whole. The next two curses had to do with the sanctity of human life. The tenth curse dealt with attacking your neighbor secretly, implying that you killed him. This was condemned in Numbers chapter 35, verse 16, which says, And if he smite him with an instrument of iron so that he die, he is a murderer. The murderer shall surely be put to death. The eleventh curse dealt with taking a bribe to go and kill another who is innocent. This was condemned all the way back in Exodus 23, verses 7 and 8, which says, Keep thee far from a false matter, and the innocent and righteous slay thou not, for I will not justify the wicked. And thou shalt take no gift, for the gift blinds the wise and perverts the words of the righteous. God has always viewed human life as sacred, and those who take it as deserving of death. This is something Israel needed to learn, for all the evil nations round about them did not hold life in such high regard. And then the twelfth and final curse is really one that sums it all up, which is cursed is the one who doesn't confirm the words of the law. The law of Moses was to become a pattern in the people's lives. 
they were to know what the law said and pledged to keep it. Now there are some who correctly say that keeping this law to the letter was never done by anyone in Israel, for all have sinned, save Jesus. But that save Jesus is an important point. It's not that the law couldn't be followed completely and perfectly, for Jesus did. It's that nobody but Jesus kept it perfectly, and so since the law didn't have a remedy for sin, it brought on the person who broke it a curse, the curse of sin. But simply because Israel sinned in parts of the law didn't mean that God just gave them a free pass. He expected them to follow it and offer the sacrifices necessary when they didn't. With those sacrifices came the promise of forgiveness, which ultimately came through Christ. For us today, we live under the law of Christ. Do Christians sin? Yes. But unlike with Israel, the law of Christ has the solution, the shed blood of Christ on the cross. When Christians sin, we can repent and ask God to forgive us. The law of Christ isn't a curse for us because Jesus took away the curse by solving the sin problem. If Israel didn't seek to follow after God's law, God would curse them, which of course he did, time and time again. In our next lesson, we'll turn to look at some of the blessings that Israel could enjoy if they obeyed the will of God. With that, our time is up for today. The Lord willing, we hope you'll join us for tomorrow's discussion of Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 1 to 8, as we continue our walk through the Bible. One verse at a time. I'm not a Thank you for watching today's episode. We hope that you found it edifying and ask that you not only subscribe to our channel and podcast, but that you like and share this episode among your friends so that the saving gospel of Jesus Christ can go out to the whole world. Of his cross.